from Pastor John Piper in a video here on YouTube asks how does it glorify God to predestine people to hell and he proposes a serious answer to that question indicating that it does somehow glorify God to predestine people to hell my answer is that it doesn't glorify God in fact the insinuation that God predestines anyone to hell is an insult to God and is based on error and besides that there is no eternal torment in a fiery hell anyway the Apostle Paul wrote for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord so what happens to those who do not receive the gift of eternal life well they perish in death specifically in what is called the second death after resurrection for judgment those who get the second death have no more hope of life or resurrection it is the end of them they are destroyed and will never again be here are some verses about that for yet a little while and the wicked shall not be yea thou shalt diligently consider his place and it shall not be when the wicked spring is the grass and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish it is that they shall be destroyed forever the way of the Lord is strength to the upright but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity as the whirlwind passes so is the wicked no more but the righteous is an everlasting foundation so where does the fiery eternal hell idea come from well the King James translators injected it into the King James Version by using their word hell 23 times in the New Testament in place of three different Greek words which have different meanings and none of those three refers to a place of fiery eternal torment the three Greek words are Hades or Hades in English it appears as hell ten times and as grave once in the King James Version New Testament it refers to the place of the dead similar to the Hebrew word Sheol in the Old Testament the second Greek word is Gehenna or Gehenna in English it appears twelve times in the King James New Testament and it refers to the valley just outside Jerusalem which was used as a dump in Jesus time constant fire and maggots there were sure to permanently destroy whatever was thrown in and the third Greek word is tataraos a verb an inflection or variant of the Greek word tatarao tataru in English used only once in the New Testament to describe fallen angels being put into a figurative pit or prison to be held in restraint you can look these up yourself with online Bible study tools translators especially the King James version 1611 made a real mess when they used their word hell in place of these three Greek words they had inherited their fiery eternal hell concept by tradition from the Catholic Church by using hell they were twisting the meanings of the original Greek words to conform to their own concept of a place of fiery perpetual torment so over time translators have recognized this error and have used the original Greek words instead of the word hell or at least added footnotes to show the original Greek words Young's literal translation for example never even uses the word hell let me give you an example here's Jesus speaking of hellfire and if thine eye offend thee pluck it out for it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire well hell in that verse is from that Greek word Gehenna or Gehenna a reference to that dump outside of Jerusalem trash and garbage was thrown there to be destroyed by the constant fire hell fire or dump fire and the worms maggots in the dump Jesus likened the destruction of the wicked to being cast into a burning dump for permanent final destruction the lake of fire in the book of Revelation pictures the same final destruction but the fearful and unbelieving 
and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and adulterers, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Matthew 25, verse 46, here Jesus describes the fate of the unsaved. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into e life eternal. Well, when a criminal is executed, their punishment is not everlasting in the sense of being ongoing, unending, perpetual punishing. No, the punishment is everlasting only in the sense that it is permanent, complete, and final, and irrevocable. It stands forever. It will be the same for the unsaved. They will be destroyed, and that will be the end of them. Their punishment is finished and stands forever. It is not eternal, perpetual, ongoing punishing. They will be destroyed through death and will never again be, as shown in those Old Testament verses I quoted earlier. So, let's get back to the original question. How does it glorify God to predestine people to hell? Well, let's understand the difference between predestination and predetermination, because there seems to be some confusion. God has not predetermined or bound or locked anybody into this or that fate. If such a thing were true, there would be absolutely no point in judgment. It would be a farce to judge and then condemn someone if they were already somehow hopelessly predetermined ahead of time to be condemned anyway. We have free will and will be judged accordingly, and we know that there will be judgment. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. The destiny, the destiny God intends for all, is that they will be saved from perishing in death. That is God's desire or will. That is what God has predestined or intends for all. His intention, His desire, His will is that all would be saved. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Who will have all men to be saved, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? So let's go back to the original question. How does it glorify God to be destined people to hell? Well, it doesn't glorify God. God has not predetermined anyone's fate. God has predestined all to be saved from perishing. That is the destiny God desires and intends for all. Unfortunately, many will defy God's will and will perish as a result. And there is no hell where the unsaved suffer eternal conscious torment. The unsaved will perish through death, specifically the second death. Through that second death, they will be destroyed and will no longer be 